<laughs> this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience. Welcome to the Geese Spot Podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love sound bites. Join us for conversations around sex, spirit, and all things self-care. All things self-care. All things self-care. This is a journey into sound. 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 Hey, Gay Spot listeners. This week's episode is brought to you by Ahara Gee. They're giving all of our listeners $5 off their order when they follow the link in our show notes and use the promo code Gee Spot at checkout. That is one word, Gee Spot. Ahara ghee is probably some of the best ghee, if not the best ghee, you can buy in the U.S. today. It's made with milk from grass-fed A2 cows, some of the best dairy you can get, the most easily digestible dairy that's on the market. And they make their ghee in a traditional way. So this is not a mass industrial production of ghee. This is ghee that is alive and made with love. Again, that's Ahara Ghee. You can find them at iloveghee.com. So everybody, we're so excited. Welcome to the Ghee Spot. I am cracking up. Kate Stillman's already speechless. I feel like I've really only talked to Kate maybe once or twice in my life, and yet I have conversations with her while I'm in the shower washing my hair. I feel like she's this sister of mine, this warrior of Ayurveda, this love being out there, being simultaneously a tradition lover and a rebel and a boundaries pusher. And I, I identify with that so much. Um, Kate Stillman in the Ayurveda world needs no introduction, but if you don't know who she is, you need to get out from under a rock. <laughs> She's the founder of yogahealer.com. She's written several books. Uh, Most recently, the one coming out is called Master of You, a five-point system to synchronize your body, your home, your time, and your ambition. She is the creator of yogahealer.com, which is helping thousands of people thrive in their health, their families, and their communities. She has tons of beautiful Ayurveda courses and uh, will give you guys the link to all of her stuff at the end and in the show notes. She also has one of the best podcasts out there on Ayurveda, Yoga Healer, so check it out. We've got Kate Stillman on the Gee Spot. It's happening. Welcome, Kate. Oh, I feel so welcomed. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Welcome. So how are you doing this day? I'm good. My my voice is a little froggy, you guys, so sorry about that, but I didn't I didn't want to postpone because I'm really excited to be here and I actually feel great. Uh, there's snow in the mountains. I'm in, I'm near Jackson Hole, Wyoming is, is where I live. And I just got back from She Podcast Live in Atlanta where I spoke on community building with a super receptive uh, audience. We had a blast. And back from my Manhattan event, which was a members event for, for Yoga Healer people where we do a lot of liberating structures and and experience what it's like to create a, a breakthrough using collaborative intelligence. Wow. I, I want to talk about this book. I was luckily one of the first people to get to read it. I wrote a review for you and I, I just remember thinking, you know, she's really taking this ancient intelligence and giving her own spin on it. And it's so valuable for our modern world. And I just want to, can I just read like a couple of sentences that really struck me and, I want you to elaborate. It says, in this age of digital distraction, as a global culture, we're struggling with focus, creativity, anxiety, productivity, and personal purpose. Habituated to social devices as a society, we're overscheduled, overwhelmed, overfed, and underslept. We've lost our sixth sense to navigate life via our personal purpose and sacrificed our personal health along with it yet all-encompassing solutions to realign our intrinsically and uniquely creative ambitions lie within the five elements. What is, what is that all about lady? What is, what are these five elements? And I mean, that's the whole book, but essentially 
give us a little download on how we can find these essential qualities of the five elements. Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating having, having grown up as a, as a young adult and, and as an adult on Ayurveda. Uh, when I found Ayurveda in my early 20s, I had come from this background of internet, like basically saving the planet, um, international environmental politics and policy. Mm. And when I found Ayurveda, it was like, oh my gosh, the world makes sense. Like, I couldn't believe I didn't have this operating system. Like, I couldn't mm. believe that this wisdom had been around for thousands and thousands of years. And yet in the West, we were totally cut off from it um, in the name of science and rationality. Mm -hmm. And it's just a super disconnected, like this really super disconnected way where like, many of us who were children of the 80s, you know, we grew up like there were people like really into counting calories without yeah. understanding nourishment. Um, you know, and, and that's just such a little kind of blip that demonstrates the differential between being empowered from a holistic consciousness that understands the sky and the earth and understands the fire and the wind and mm -hmm. understands water uh, and understands that not as concepts, but as, as intrinsic experiences, both within each cell of the body and then also within our interactions and our, you know, with our, with our planet, mm -hmm. uh, with our universe. So when I discovered Ayurveda, it was like, oh my gosh, something finally makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and it makes sense so, from the inside out. Yeah. You, um, I think of them as like superpowers of the elements. And you really lay that out in the book of, of, of helping us all understand how we can use it for like what I think of as like Dharma. Like I, I love that aspect of you. And that's the kind of conversation conversation I'm having you with, with you in my head in the shower because I'm like there's like this one person out there in the world that gets me and it's in, and even though we barely know each other it, I know it's Kate Stillman because she understands the fire in me and the drive and the ambition and where it's coming from and and there's a line in your book and it's so tantric which is my wheelhouse you know and you say evolution speaks through desire and so I want to talk a little bit about how you navigate this tricky world of, on one hand, yoga and spirituality and humility and poverty and all of these sorts of sort of ideas of what it means to be a spiritual person. And then on the other hand, desire. And I know you're just such an ambitious go-getter, let's do this shit kind of person that I do have, you know, identify with and have a, a strong streak of that. And in a lot of my students, I'm like, guys, come on, like, let's get out there, like, let's create. And so how do you navigate that world? And I'm sure other people have asked you similar questions or you've been confronted with that kind of paradigm. Yeah, no, I have. I mean, and to me, it's like book one, you know, body thrive is the habits of yogis that prescribe a formula. All I did was, you know, codify it in modern language of go to bed early, you know, which means that you have to eat an earlier, lighter dinner. Um, when you do those two things and you naturally wake up earlier and you naturally have a better shot at a bowel movement. And then, and then, you know, the next habit of just doing breath body practices of just opening and aligning and surrendering and on and on. So there's these, these habits that just allow us to live a life aligned. They actually are the habits of resilience in that. I don't say that lightly in the day and age of, you know, increasing autoimmune disorders of the immune disruption of chronic inflammation everywhere, food allergies everywhere. Food allergies are a now known uh, precursor to autoimmune diseases mm. uh, as are any allergies. So just, you know, where we're, we're inflamed, where we're in reaction to our environment, uh, we're in, in reaction to our nourishment. So if we can actually align our habits to help us discover deep nourishment uh, both from, you know, things like the breath, but also from, from real nutrients and food, from um, healthy healing ecosystems, then what happens is we're able, we're, we're able to act from a place of grounded in, interconnectivity. Mm. And when we're acting from a place of grounded interconnectivity, we have access to way more energy. I mean, some people would say infinite, like universal energy is infinite. If you're tapped in, and constantly regenerating yourself based on the habits that enable regeneration, then you, you are a superhero. Like you can do so much more in the world. Mm. But right now, this is totally radical um, and counterculture. And mm. counterculture is a big 
it's a big deal. Like if everyone around you is in sync and mm-hmm. <laughs> eating deep nourishment and doing their breath body practices, if everyone around you is not constipated, um, is having complete bowel movements and, you know, is going to bed early and is rested, then you will have a way easier time with that. If everyone around you is meditating, you'll actually naturally find yourself shifting states of consciousness and finding peace and silence. And, Mm -hmm. but if you're not, and if everyone around you is overscheduled and running around on processed food and staying up too late, watching Netflix and waking up groggy and constipated and just getting on with their coffee in their day, then Mm -hmm. that will have a massive influence on, on each of us as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just did this wild, like wilderness. I'm doing one week in a month with this community of adults in the woods, and you spend the night in the woods. And we, I mean, it's a, it's a program filled thing. We're learning. I learned how to. I mean, you'll appreciate this as a yogini. I've always thought of myself as like this tantric fire ritualist, and and I'd never made fire with like <sighs> we we like whittled a a stick. You know, we whittled a fire kit and. I was having such a hard time and the, the guy, the leader, he's like this older, older guy. He was like, he stayed with me and the group stayed with me. And I, I finally got the coal and we were chanting in English, these fire mantras. And I got, I got fire and Kate, I just started trembling and like crying because it, I realized it was the first time in my life where I had had an elder teach me something in a group that was so elemental and it, and and he he said be careful you're gonna hit you could hit a wall of grief and it was so beautiful because and i even have grief as i'm i don't know grief and joy of like what you said like this should be so natural for us and yet yeah. and i went home the happiest i've been in so long uh and, and i and you know it just seems like this this is really the Ayurveda. I call it the Ayurveda of Virginia, like just going out into the woods, understanding the animals in my area, making fire, singing songs in English has been really powerful and really connecting with the elements in my own local space. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing is, is the elements are like the way I write about them in Master of Views are these, they are these concepts as well. Whereas when we start to experience transformational experiences like you just did, where there's, there's a supportive container, there's a teaching, there's patience with a process, and then there's transformation. We start to understand the nature of fire. We start mm-hmm. to understand the nature of what it is to do something we've never done before. Mm-hmm. And then that stops being a limiter. Mm-hmm. Like to do something we've never done before is, you know, I mean, that's human ambition. <laughs> like it's just, yeah. And so now we're so now you're able to do anything more. Like anything that seemed harder is now just okay. I can I can I can do more. I can learn what needs to be learned. I can receive support. Mm-hmm. I can receive mentorship. I can be patient with the process. That's a huge component of design thinking that I bring into the book. Of like, mm-hmm. it's a big part of yoga of of yasa of like patience with practice. Of, practice with you know knowing that it's for a greater reason and yet not being attached to the timeline Mm -hmm. uh and so when we yeah go ahead well i was just gonna say i have this sticky note you know because i wrote a book about ayurveda as you know and it's all about like what we do and like you said it was already there i'm just putting it in the new language and your book is so like taking Ayurveda to this next level. And I have, a, and you know, I love all the podcasts and all the things and all the books and all the Ted talks. And I have this sticky note in my bathroom when a uh, mirror that says you are doing enough. And so my next kind of question or, or thought of what I'd love to hear from you is just how do you balance this clear sense of fire and drive and dharma and longing and passion and rajas with the yin of it all like (laughs) yeah to our listeners out there who i'm sure we have more than a few fire princesses out there listening you know how do you balance that do 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 because you know i struggle with that too even with ayurveda recently i've just been like you know what i'm eating whatever the fuck i want and whenever I want it, like I grew up on brown beans and cornbread, I'm eating chili again, you know, like I'm doing what my ancestors did basically. Yeah. And yeah. I have my digestion. It's never been better. And yeah. 
I'm kind of leaving the shoulds for, for a little while because I've been so connected to all the rules. And so I know that's yeah. a couple of questions in there, but what, do you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, yes, yes, and yes, and yes to the food of our ancestors. Um, and just a quick comment on that, too, is there's a link in obesity to the number of generations um, that haven't cooked home cooked food. For so for some of, some of you listening that, like, your mom didn't cook and maybe your grandma didn't cook, you got to go back, and you just got to say, like, in the family tree, people living in this region, what foods did they make? Because those are your healing foods, and mm-hmm. those foods are easier for you to digest. Like, I still have a heck of a time with legumes uh and my european ancestors ate a lot of lamb and a lot of bone stews and that sort of thing which i can digest like without even so really that. it's not about where you're living in the moment because i live in virginia and who knows what they ate but like what did your lineage eat from yes way way back way way back yeah it's just it's just easier to digest and you know a lot of these are heirloom grains at this point uh mm-hmm. and just knowing that i mean that's where the resurgence in the marketplace is it's not gluten free you guys it's not stuff in gluten free packages no way. Uh, it's heirloom grains and it's heirloom beans and it's real you know for those of us who are omnivores um it's whole it's it's whole animals it's like understanding the use of the hooves understanding the use of the I mean, just, uh, you know, of all the parts, the bones, the bone marrow, the fat tissue, like all of it. And it's, it is, it is a return to that. I think Sally Fallon nourishing traditions is probably the best cookbook on, and that for most people with European ancestry. Mm. Yeah. But to go back to the deeper question around, you know, the, the to do or the not to do, um, it, it, to me, it goes back to like, where are you sourcing action from? So there's, mm. And you brought up the shoulds too. So for some of us, especially those, the fire princesses, uh, who are who set like really big goals, and I think you and I set pretty big goals for ourselves. So we can feel into that. Uh, it is good to get clear on like the who, like who are you trying to impress, <laughs> uh, or like why, why am I doing all of this? Yeah, like who set that goal? Like, is it? I love voice dialogue by Helen Sidgwick-Stone. Uh, where you just break down the different voices in your head. So it's like, you know, like my goal years ago was to build a million dollar company. Um, well, before that, it was a half million dollar company. Before that, it was a quarter million dollar company. And I never, you know, like in those processes, I, I didn't really pause to say like, who's, who am I trying to impress? Or who's, who's this speaking? Who has this goal? Like what, is it an ancestor? Is it, um, is it someone in my ecosystem today? Is it just, you know, what a lot of it is. And so by the time I got there with Yoga Healer to the million dollar mark, I, I really sat with like, what, you know, what next and, and where next and why. And being able to create from a place of joy is not where most people are. And that's why the first book is really where most people need to start is like, mm-hmm. right. go to Get bed. Yourself in, right, right. <laughs> And Get yourself me, regular. And for me, Kate, I, like this is also a conversation maybe we should have at some point down the line. Like, I was on the cover of Yoga Journal magazine in Russia, and I, people, not many people know this. The following month, I was in the hospital with a, a burnout, breakdown, nervous system collapse, and I had been doing meditation and pranayama and very you know, considered very high level asana, eating all the right Ayurvedic foods most of the time, taking all the ashwagandha and the shatavari. I mean, my nervous system. And it is only now that my nervous system through all of the somatic experiencing and trauma release and the Farhado method and all these kind of cutting edge things that nobody knows about, but that like everybody needs. That's when I started to have an understanding of what Ojas even was. And to create from that place. And so my big mission now is to train people that the yoga that we've even inherited isn't, isn't necessarily going to bring in the ojas that we need because of the level of dysfunction and, and, and trauma in our world today. So uh, that was a slight tangent, but I just, I feel so strongly about, the, like you said, my first book, like we have to first have enough ojas to be able yeah. to consider what we're creating and putting yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so, I mean, most people are depleted. And just if you're listening, like how to know you're depleted, one of the big signs right now is wired and tired mm-hmm. where, you know, you're tired, but you can't get a really good night's sleep. Um, maybe you can, your body can only stay asleep for two hours or four hours or six hours. Uh, that's a sign, you know, and to respect that, like 
oh, I, I see people all the time on, you know, living our Ayurveda course, one of our target audiences is people with autoimmune disorders. Mm -hmm. And so the, when someone is surprised by an autoimmune diagnosis, I like to like stop and play like the pre-story, like what was the prequel to that? Because uh, the body was giving us signs and signals and signs and signals and signs and signals. Like before you get a diagnosis like that, a lot has already happened. So I was talking with this woman the other day and I, you know, I just asked her like how many consecutive hours have you been able to sleep uh, where you haven't woken up over the past few years? And she like raises her eyebrow <laughs> and, uh, you know, I get like a four hours, you know, max over the last three to four years. And then her hair was falling out a couple of years ago. Her, you know, her hairdresser noticed that her hair was thinning. Uh, you know, way prematurely, premenopausal. And, you know, so this is the body like screaming, <laughs> like, it's not working. It's not working. You're not sourcing from love and joy. Like, go to sleep, go to sleep. Well, like, and to the challenge of, because I've had my whole journey with sleep as well, the challenge with that that I've discovered, because everyone was like, you, you need to rest, you need to rest, you need to rest. I'm like, God damn it, I wrote a whole book on Ayurveda. I know I need to rest. Like, and, and I changed my whole life. I stopped travel teaching, I don't teach at all except online at this moment. We, we do a couple of events locally. But Kate, I still couldn't get there. And what I discovered, and I would like do all the things to have the rest. And, you know, basically it was just it's, at one point I was just staring at the walls like, okay, let's rest, you know. And what I found was that if the underlying system is in fight or flight based on yeah. these old patterns, yeah. I couldn't get out of it with Ayurveda or meditation. Yeah. I, had, I had to really find... A, a different and deeper, in my opinion, a little bit of a more, but I mean, it's all yoga and Ayurveda at the end of the day, right? If it's wisdom and, but yeah, the sleep thing, I think is like the grand malaise of our time. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it's why people like Rod Stark are just like, okay, we can't do yoga. We've got to do yoga nidra. Like, cause you can't, you're really not supposed to do yoga from a place of depletion. Yeah. Right? But the so challenge, we, the challenge of yoga nidra is that if you're in a collapsed state, it will take you deeper into collapse, which is what happened to me. I was doing a ton of yoga nidra and then I met with a nervous system expert in Portland and she was like, the worst thing that you can do is actually deepen this uh, like exaggerated form of nidra or relax. Mm. And, and mm. that blew my mind because I've been doing nidra for five years and getting worse and worse and worse and more collapsed. Mm. So it's, it's so subtle. It's this nervous system thing. But yes, yeah. most people do well with more relaxation but. right well and even just getting there i mean we find it just you know just like looking at well the two things like when they're eating so if you're intermittent fasting that's going to help mm -hmm. you know there's just a lot of lot of the habits are linked to the other habits if you're if you're constipated right just getting regular bowel movements through eating eating your special superpower pooper foods mm -hmm. uh, you know that really work for your body <laughs> that work for your ancestors like there's it's all totally tied together and then yeah the body like get helping getting other people to help you release trauma and energies from your bodies is, is definitely huge but just to go on to it's like once people are there and they're like i'm rested you know like then we can really create from from this place of love and joy we can we can create things i think that are like you know mission impossible type of yeah just missions for ourselves where it's like i wonder and that's really where i came at that next point with yoga healers like if really i've been given every i think resource and advantage possible like that's my orientation that's my gratitude mindset of like if i can't do this if i can't make a bigger impact then who possibly could i mean really you know um just given like the people that I've had as, and you know, and, and I know you can relate, like the people you've had as teachers and mentors and guides over mm -hmm. decades. Um, at some point it's like, who do I need to become next in order to serve, you know, to, to get the message out um, to people I love that might that. not be able to hear it. Who do I need to become next? Kate, um, how do you deal with, or have you ever had any critique around the traditional Ayurveda not to put them like verses, but like, you know, vis-a-vis -vis your expression of modern day. Um, how do you deal with, with that kind of thing? Or have you not had any of that? <laughs> the haters. <laughs> how do you deal with the haters? <laughs> how do you deal with the critics? I, I got a lot of haters early on. I feel like I blew through a lot of that karma, you know, at an earlier date to the point where I, was, I realized just how closed-minded uh, traditionalists can be. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where they stop innovating mm -hmm. and that they just, they recite the past, which is a big part of our tradition. Like that's not, it's, that's not all bad, but it's good just to, for a lot of people to understand that that's like a good, it's a good part of the picture, but it's not the whole picture. Mm -hmm. So the, the first big wave of that happened when I started really doing a ton of interviews with uh, the people that were into raw foods in Ayurveda, who mm -hmm. like Dr. Gabriel Cousins, Dr. Shantri Kassara, both who had written phenomenal books on Gabriel on conscious eating, Shantri on uh, the Ayurvedic tongue diagnosis. And in there, they start talking a lot more about prana and they talk a lot more about connection to ecosystem. So they were, I thought, the thought leaders in Ayurveda that had moved away from importing your herbs from India, from eating an Indian diet, a uh, cooked food diet. When I interviewed Gabriel in the Ayurveda summit years ago, and I and I interviewed a few people on this, like I asked the same question to a bunch of people because I had them all <laughs> in the summit. It was so fun. And, you know, the, like the whole thing about Ayurveda and cooked foods is basically due to bacteria and refrigeration. Oh, wow. Limitation. Hey, everybody listening, y'all need to stop and pause and listen because I'm so tired of people get sending us hate mail because we do a smoothie on Instagram. Listen to Kate Stillman. <laughs> say, say that again, Kate. I don't know if everyone understood <laughs> the, the depth of what you're saying. <laughs> well, yeah, there was a, you know, so Ayurveda is old, which means it's moved through, it's moved through epics and eras and, and genres in itself. And so there was a time when people were more disconnected from you know, from their own ecosystem where they were eating really prana rich foods in their environment and they were eating, you know, they were eating foods that didn't, that required refrigeration, um, but they didn't have it. And so they just started cooking all their foods. And that's why so much of Ayurveda is, is cooked foods. Because if you talk to the experts, like I, I did, uh, and on numbers, like you can, you guys can Google the backlogs of the Yogi Healer podcast. I started posting interviews in 2007 um, on the Yogi Healer blog and released the podcast in 2012. So I'm like not new to the show. And in the early conversations with Shantri Kassara, he talks a lot about a vata balancing diet, a vata balancing raw diet. He's vata kapha, like he doesn't have strong pitta, uh, but he created a permaculture ashram up in London, Ontario. And he's like, you know, what are the principles of vata pacifying diet? It's got to be, it's got to be warm. It's got to be spice. It's got to be pre-combined before it hits the stomach. It's got to be um, oily or have a, a heaviness to it. He's like, there, there's nothing in there that says cooked. Mm -hmm. uh, you can warm foods in a dehydrated 120 degrees. You can, um, there's lots of things that you can do with foods to keep. If you're looking at the, you know, the way that I look at it is, is the prana, right? Is the vata component. The, um, the pitta component is the enzymes and the nutrients component. That's the, the kapha. So you have like vata, pitta, kapha. You've got the prana, the enzymes, and the nutrients. Uh, so people that are following more of a raw foods diet, if you've heard that Ayurveda isn't raw foods, like that's, it's, it's a bit of a, it's a little bit of misinformation. It's not coming from the wrong place. Um, it might be coming from people that really like rules mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and like to simplify rules, but just know you there's know, great people out there. Yeah, go ahead. Just to speak to that point of those who really like rules, one of the teachers that I'm working with now, she's this nervous system expert. We've had her on the show, Alicia Farhado. You may want to check her out. You'd really oh, like yeah. her. And right. she said, you know, when people's nervous systems are in a state of collapse and, or, or, or flight, these yeah. people, these are the, so she, she sort of like we codify into uh, Vata, Pitta and Kapha and body types. They're looking at people based on the structure and where their actual physiology and bone structure are in regard to fight, flight, collapse. And there are seven stages of fight and flight and collapse. And, but uh, anyways, she was saying that when you are in one of these later stages of fight, flight, you seek rule givers, <laughs> Yeah. It's a comfort, right? Yeah. And, and really all of us are, do, are, are our own boss at the end of the day and have to know what feels good inside of our own body. And it's absolutely, and, and I say this having printed a book with food lists, I don't really prescribe food lists anymore. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it's, I love how Jordan Peterson talks about it in 12 Rules of Life. Um, the, it's really the relationship between order and chaos. So if, you, if your nervous system is, is in rest and digest, you can push mm. the boundary into chaos. Mm -hmm. And that's growth, where you can take calculated 
risks from a grounded embodiment and and you can see like do i want to grow in this way do i want to grow in this way and you can start to become a bigger version mm. of yourself but those that have uh you know that their nervous system is in a, a broken down state uh, you you need more, more and more order so you go away and away and away from chaos so your world gets smaller and smaller and smaller mm -hmm. uh, which can be you know, I mean, if you think of the drug addict uh, in this case, where like they're making bad decisions and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and their freedoms become less and less and less. Mm -hmm. um, that's sort of an extreme version of it, but it kind of helps see like, oh, that's like the extreme of dysfunction mm -hmm. with All that, right. where they're not making good calculated risks. But also when people are in a broken down nervous system, we're also not in modern day culture making good calculated risks. Like you might continue. Uh, in, I mass. See this all the yeah. in mass, right? Mm -hmm. so we're, we're driving cars, you know, we're driving <laughs> at, at, at speed and we're getting in car accidents and, you know, I mean, just things like that. I mean, the number, the research on it is, out, is just astounding with the Department of Transportation just saying it's, you know, basically. I mean, I think about that. At epidemic levels. Claudia, you know, we love Dr. Claudia here too. And, and she said, I was like, you know, sometimes I feel just so weird and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, you know what? You're not medicating yourself like have compassion because you're not medicating, you know, you're not using alcohol, you're not using sleeping pills, you're not, and no offense if anybody is doing that, you know, any port in a storm, like there's no judgment around any of that. But like I walk around the street and I think about how much, how much drugs are being used, pharmaceuticals, just all of them. Right. And uh, how, how, and I think how are people driving their cars on all this stuff? Yeah. Not well yeah. is the answer according yeah. to the Department of Transportation. <laughs> but so, it also, yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, no, you go ahead. Yeah, so, so if we fast forward to those of us who are in, you know, who are grounded and embodied and intact and we want to create from this place of, of joy and love and like we want, it, we want to be able to do more, to me that's really where we start to be able to, you know, take our, take our own command with the elements mm -hmm. uh, and to me, that's where we start to realize like, oh my gosh, I'm totally empowered to, to shape my space, mm -hmm. to shape my vibration, right? I'm, that then clears the way for a bigger vision mm -hmm. to even become more clear. And then that vision is fire. Then we can move it into the, the field of time, which is air element, where you can measure past and future, where you can also bend time, where you can make a lot happen really quickly, um, or you can slow time and go at a much slower, at a slower, deeper pace. And then that brings up all of our, all of the things that it's like all the gaps that are really within us. So that are within our integrity and that, mm -hmm. and that is water. Uh, and in that usually like if we're in greater and greater degrees of integrity, we get to experience greater and greater degrees of flow. And in that we're able to flow into our next iteration of, of all of it. And I just want to say like, there's, there's also in, I feel like in, in your circles and my circles, there's like a lot more people that are actually super functional now than ever who have done so much deep healing, who, who, you know, live habits in a way that really gives them a lot more potentiality uh, and who want to make a bigger difference. Hi there, this is Amari, program manager at Shakti School with a quick update. If you love this podcast and learning about Ayurveda, health, yoga, psychology, and everything in between, we have two really special offerings right now that are free. The first is our mini course on Divine Feminine Ayurveda. This is actually a special sneak peek into Ayurveda school. It's four hours worth of video and an accompanying workbook. If you're looking for inspiration or just curious about Katie's approach to Ayurveda, I highly recommend this offering. You can sign up for it by going to bit.ly backslash Ayurveda mini course. That's B-I-T dot L-Y backslash Ayurveda mini course. And I'm going to put the link to that in the show notes for you. The second offering is a free 30-day trial of our subscription platform, The Lineage of Love. Every month in The Lineage of Love, you get a new seasonally attuned video and audio workshop with Katie. The workshops are a mix of movement, yoga, meditation, Ayurveda, and all the other stuff we love to talk about. The link to register for the free trial is bit.ly backslash lineage dash of dash love dash free dash trial. So I'll definitely put a link to that one in the show notes too. 
Now, if you know you're ready to go deep and spend a year learning with us, the next session of Ayurveda School starts in January, and the deadline for registration is December 31st. Getting back into the swing of learning can be a big commitment, but it's also the best catalyst for change and evolution. If Katie and I could have every woman do at least level one of Ayurveda School, we would. It's a year-long program that will both nurture and challenge you in the best way. It's everything we should have learned as beings with bodies and psyches that we were never taught in school. If you want to have a chat with me about whether this program is right for you, you can put a free call directly on my calendar at calendly.com backslash Shakti School backslash free coaching call. That's C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y dot com backslash Shakti School slash free coaching call. And I will we'll also put that link in the show notes. Have a beautiful day, sisters. Now back to the episode. Kate, I feel like I could talk to you all day. I know we can <laughs> bend time. I know you you can bend time. I don't know if I I'm I don't know if my cities have reached that level yet, but I'm working on it. I just feel like the main message that I'm getting from this is it's like slow down to speed up in a way of like the Mara yeah. the Ojas. I, and I really just want to come back to this piece that you said that it just touched my heart so much that is, you know, the why of what we're doing and like who's running the ship. And, and when I, in the mornings, just remember that my job on this planet is to love myself and to bring more love into this world. And like, and I ask to be used in that way. And, and of course, like the more challenging part is really usually loving yourself, but to share that and just be a vessel for that force, like, magic starts to happen and I never thought I mean if you would have said you're you're going to do this or that or and like you said like if just to walk in the gratitude of all the blessings in our life that I know our listeners know this as well we actually live in the most privileged time and place in, in human history and so you know what how can I be of greater service um, that really builds Ojas more than anything else yeah. And what I find too is receiving. And I know, I know this, this word is big for a lot of people in this year mm -hmm. uh, as we're rediscovering, you know, we're rediscovering this deep feminine experience of, of receiving, you know, as opposed to pushing as opposed mm -hmm. to that, that, you know, it's the yin yang, right. That you brought up earlier. So for instance, when someone yeah. pays you a compliment, this used to happen to me a lot. So those of mm -hmm. us who have been like impact junkies for a long time, we're like, you're making a difference um, and you're putting stuff <laughs> out there. You know, you're not worried about is, <laughs> is like you get, you get, you get thanked for that. So what was happening with me years ago is as I would be thanked and I'd be like, Oh yeah. You know, and I'm a cocky SOB. I always have been like ridiculously cocky. Uh, I think it's part of the, it's, it's part of the one of the boys. It's like, I love the um, Maureen Murdoch's work and, and the, uh, what is it? The heroine's journey. And she, she kind of breaks down some of the patterns. So one of my pattern was like, be one of the boys. That was one of my, you know, like my goddess survival patterns um, in my early days. And so part of that, I would just sort of shirk off the impact I was making. And like when someone would be come up to me and say like, you, don't know how much you've changed my life. Like you don't know how much you've changed my family's life. Like you don't know, how, like you saved my marriage. I dropped 50 pounds. I'm no longer diabetic and blah, 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 blah. Like, oh yeah. You know, and I just be like, cool. Um, so I stopped doing that. <laughs> I started to really slow down the experience of receiving, of receiving mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is someone inviting me into the law of reciprocity. And if I'm, not, if I'm in violation of the law of reciprocity, I'm, it, when we're in violation of any of the universal laws, but especially like this give and take one, uh, we will burn ourselves out. Like we will, we will take a hit somewhere in our physiology with that. And so I started to just really <sighs> drop in. And, and then that, when you drop in, it's dropping. Like it brings you into gravity that brings you into earth and water element. It's a, it's a, there, it's heavy. Someone is sharing how you mm -hmm. impacted them in the positive. And there is a weight to that because ha if you had not chosen to do that, there is a, a strong likelihood that they would still be suffering. 
And so I, I decided to actually feel from the place of transmission and to receive from that place of transmission and to let my cells be changed. And what I found is that's like one of the fastest paths for me right now in building OGIS and like building like deep, deep resilience. Ugh, I feel like that per personally, this is why you and I are together for me to receive that from you just now. Like, I, I so get that. I've been in so many situations where I'll have taught a long workshop and people come up and they'll want to tell me how much the, my work has impacted them. And, and I kind of just want to get on to the next thing because I was raised in that Christian tradition where it's not me. I'm just doing my work on this planet for God. And, and, you know, my mom always said, stay humble, take a compliment and a critique the same way. It's not personal. You know, you're just doing God's work. But when I actually let myself feel the, the compliment it is food and it has weight and it actually makes me slow down. And I think sometimes I can get many of us can get, well, what's next, right? Instead of just like, well, take, take a minute to like feel the impact of something that you did in the world. And so I, I so get that and I'm, I'm, I'm receiving that right now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in Ayurveda, right, we've got digestion, absorption, elimination. And this is, again, for many people who come to Ayurveda as a self-healer, uh, we can just feel like, my gosh, Ayurveda is spending a lot of time on digestion, absorption, and, and a little, you know, an elimination. Like, we're really sort of on the level of a very, very, very deep curiosity and uh, iterative improvement with that right and it's like as you get better at absorption you don't need as much food like you you live lighter uh, you stress the body less so the body puts more and more energy into regeneration um, and into dharma mm -hmm. and to me this is it's not it's it, it's like finally not lost on me of you know like you said both the critique and the compliment uh, the more we are able to absorb I I can make a and I can have an example here that will also be a public apology. <laughs> so one of my, one of my members of, of body, Club, which is our, <laughs> our habits course, uh, we were having lunch in Manhattan in the middle of the workshop. And she said, you know, you don't know this, but uh, we've had a tiff. And so I paused and I, and I just felt it, you know, just like, again, stop, drop, in to the gravity of like oh fuck what did i do so i just said let me start by apologizing and let me know my part in our tiff with not needing to you know blow it off or stay superficial or make a light of it or or over exaggerate it either but just like let like let me know what i can't see uh and then like let me change my behavior and it was so it was really cool. I was so it was from an interview with a podcast on um, with one of our yoga health coaches who teach the body thrive habits, and she's a she's a podiatrist who works with the diabetes uh, population, adult onset type two, mostly poverty level, and these people get you know they'll be prescribed with prediabetes, and then later they'll have diabetes, and then they'll have a toe cut off, and then they'll have their other toes cut off, and then they'll have their ankle cut off, and then, I'm like. You know, and I was kind of being like, what point do you not get the message? Because she's trying, she's also a yoga teacher and a health coach. Like she's trying to help them make better decisions. Um, and then I had said something like, well, these aren't really our people. Like these people don't really show up in my world over at Yoga Healer. And she just was devastated because she's in Body Thrive and she's been a podcast listener forever. And she was like, I'm not, I'm not one of the tribe. Because uh, she fit into a pre-diabetic category. Uh, and so for me to feel into that, like at the level of where it's being transmitted from means there is a world of learning that will actually help my impact go into another level. So it is both, right? It's like, no, it is without I, preference. I feel, I'm feeling you so much right now. When you put your voice out there, I told my students this at a workshop where I hurt someone's feelings as well. And I, I publicly apologized, but I also knew the intention in my heart, as you know, the intention of your heart in that moment. And after I had publicly apologized, I said to the group, I also want you guys to know that I sit up in front of here, in front of you guys every single day, and I expose myself. 
and I make myself so vulnerable. And Kate Stillman has so many podcasts more than anyone I know. You run your mouth. And guess what? 99% <laughs> of the time, we're all applauding. And 1% of the time, you're going to put your foot in your mouth big time. And so am I. And if I change, Kate, and if you change, nobody is going to pay you money to listen to you because the personality will go. And I find myself walking that tightrope where I, I just want to hide and get a dog and a boyfriend and be like f all y'all i'm not gonna say anything i think we're also in this period i mean and this is totally unrelated to your apology but i i i fear sometimes that we're also in this moment in time where we're also afraid of offending people and oh. um, i can't remember which writer i was reading said you guys we have to remember the most important thing with this online world is forgiveness because actions, like humans can't take back our actions and our words. And that's why forgiveness has been the seminal feature of all spiritual tradition and really just good human interaction. And I just, I, I love that aspect of forgiveness and, and how we kind of lost that. But I said to my students, I sit up here in front of you guys and I make myself so vulnerable. Your job, apart from taking in this information that I'm offering you, is to forgive your teacher. You know, and, and, and obviously I had to go home and do a lot of work around forgiving myself. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's challenging and I really commend the work that you are doing and I, I get it. And it's, you know, we had, I'll, I'll tell one more small anecdote that I think you and our listeners will appreciate. We did a teacher training like 10 years ago, back when I still did those. And I took a group when I was d young and dumb and naive. And I, I took a group of 13 or 15 people to Mexico and we lived in a house with them for a month. No boundaries. So it was so great actually. <laughs> but um, the first day that they had to teach their classes, I think seven out of the 13 started crying because it was the first time they'd ever had to stand up in front of a group and speak. And, you know, studies show that people are more afraid of speaking in public than death. And so just to, I mean, maybe this is my last question to you. Like, how do you keep showing up so authentically Kate Stillman with your voice and not running and hiding under a rock? Because I'm really in that moment right now. My second book is being worked on. And truthfully, like I said, I just, sometimes I just want to hashtag van life. And yeah, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I'm so blessed right I mean I, I I really come back to that like when I look back on my on my life uh, you know I had amazing teachers in high school public school I had an amazing mentor in college I had amazing uh, just you know along the way of just along the way and I'm inspired by people who've changed the you know, change the landscape, change the world. And, and I really do feel an enormous amount of privilege uh, being raised in, I was raised in, you know, middle class, upper middle class. I had, I had access to any college I wanted, you know, could get into. I had, I had full choice after college to do whatever I wanted with my life to self fund my next life really without too much up. Uh, I mean, not too much programming and judgment. I don't, I mean, I definitely was like, you know, fuck what everyone else is doing. I can do my own thing anyways, regardless of what everyone else thinks. But I think it takes a certain level of having gone through, you know, having enough access to things to, to even get to that state of mind. And, and then when I look over the years of starting yoga healer in 2001 and hiring my first assistant, well, I had interns right away. I had support right away where I recruited interns um, I recruited, we had a really strong mentoring program the entire time. I hired my first like virtual assistant for online stuff, maybe in 05 or 07. Yeah, no, it's been earlier than that, 05. Uh, now I have a team of 10 people. Like there's no reason we can't do really tremendously huge, great things. And so that's, that's more of where I source from is a place of, of receiving and I think anyone can find this, like anyone can look back on their life and find the gems. Anyone can find the people that were true uh, to a deeper purpose for their life and pull from that into themselves. Uh, 
I think we can all just get in touch with the five elements, which is sort of what Master View is about, is like we all have the five superpowers. And as we reconnect them, we all, we all and I've worked with this with so many hundreds, I don't know, yeah, hundreds, there's maybe 700 people that have gone through Body Thrive now. Like people with like the most avert, like schedule averse lifestyle to these habits can find a way to align their life to habits that support their body and their mind and their spirit. And that's a lot of that. It will save you money over time uh, where you're just making more aligned decisions. So my sense is like the more of us that are in that place of like receiving our own privilege and, and mm. really, you know, coming from the place of like, it's my life. How do I like, what's the deathbed perspective? Like how big a game can I play? And what does that even mean? And what does that even mean to me? Mm. Uh, the other thing for me that's been, it was really fun. I've also hired really great coaches the whole time. So I've reinvested in myself and I know you have too, like this as a, as a personal practice that didn't end with me with going into, you know, finishing college and then self-funding my own, uh, continuing education. I, I continue to self-fund that greater and greater levels year over year, you know, and from that place of like, what can I, mm -hmm. You know, like what can what can we do with what can we really do with all this? Uh, it just feels it just feels so important. I started yeah. out in environmentalism. Internet, hold on. Oh, okay. I'll just keep talking. <laughs> I I started out in environmentalism, and I'm like right back there with like oh, how can. There you are. Okay. Um, I got you. Okay, so you were saying you had great mentors, great teachers. That's the last I heard. Yeah. So, I mean, my sense is like, who can we mentor, <laughs> right? Like how I'm 46 now, like I get that I'm building massive skills right now to have massive impact in my fifties and sixties. Uh, if I do that from a, from a really embodied mm -hmm. grounded place, it. it'll just, it'll just go and go and go on, on just greater levels of, of exponential. So I feel like a lot of us don't do that where we don't back out of, our day that's in front of us and get the eagle eye perspective eagle eye. on like, yeah. right. Like what do I need to do now to be more aligned tomorrow? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do now to be more aligned next year? What do I need to do now to be more aligned next decade? But when you have a deep time perspective of your own life and you really ask yourself like, what is my life and what do I, what do I want to do? And you stop getting out of, I can't like you stop coming out, just getting tangled up in the, how you're going to do it. And you just actually focus on the what mm -hmm. boy, it just changes everything. Magic starts to flow. Yeah. Well, Kate, is your book out? When is it out? How can we let all of our listeners know about this amazing work coming up? I definitely, I have the PDF, but I want my, I want a hard copy. Yeah. Uh, so it actually, it comes out March 17th, 2020. So it's, it's way out. Oh, you we're can't, way pre ahead. we're way ahead. You can pre-order it though on Amazon. Um, Body Thrive is out. So if anyone wants the book on the 10 habits of yogis, then that's, that's on Amazon. It's called Body Thrive. Uh, yeah. And we'll be, and how can I'm, people find out about you? yogahealer.com uh, that's our hub is yogahealer.com since 2001 oh my gosh uh, and there's a free stuff section in there we have a lot of free trainings so go pick your own adventure there's like a whole awaken your dream training where you get awakened to what your own deeper dream is for your life um, and that really goes with this with this master of you book I'm heading over I'm gonna get that course y'all Kate it has been a total pleasure. I'm going to sit here receiving all the greatness that I got to, to receive from you today. And I really appreciate you being on the Geese Spot. Thank you for being here.